So you're going to start with the main color, whatever main color you want for your dress, and you're going to take the yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that slip knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then we're going to make a chain of 64, but I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 64, and then come back. So I just finished my chain, and my chain measures 14 and a half inches. Then you're going to take and make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So count back one, two, three, four, and in the fourth chain from the hook, make your double crochet. And then you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. So one double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So now you should have a total of 62 stitches after finishing that first row. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then turn your work. And that first chain three counts as your first double crochet for this row. And you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far. When you reach the end you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you want to place stitch markers for where our, t our um, straps are going to go. So I'm going to tell you the numbers where you're going to place your stitch markers. So counting from the left, you're going to count over 7 for your first stitch marker, then 10, then 23, 26, 37, 40, 53 and 56. So this is where the back strap goes to meet up with the front strap. And here is the other back strap that will meet up with the front strap. So we're going to start on this end, the right end, and we're going to make our first strap. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the stitch with our first stitch marker, and bring up a loop with your same colored yarn. Then you're going to chain one and then tie a knot. And you're going to bury your loose yarn end as you crochet. So just lay it over so you can crochet around it. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then make a double crochet into the next stitch. Go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop, make a double crochet, make a double crochet into the next stitch, and then you can go ahead and cut your loose yarn end, and then make one more double crochet into the same stitch with the stitch marker. and then you can go ahead and remove the stitch markers just these two that helped show where this strap in the back goes then you can chain three to move up to the next row one two three turn your work and then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across and you should still have a stitch count of four and you're going to repeat this until you have a total of nine rows for the strap. So you chain three to move up to the next row. So this is our third row. Turn your work. Make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across. So go ahead, finish this pattern 
until you have a total of nine rows of double crochet stitches for your strap and then come back. Now after you finish nine rows of one double crochet in every stitch, go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this strap in place. So now you have your one side, this is the back portion of the strap, and we're going to bring it over to sew it to the front, which these the front stitch markers are the first ones right next to the back strap. So now you need to figure out which side is the right side. So this is the right side. So this will be my wrong side. So you're just going to fold your strap over. So you want to bring it over, make sure it's not twisted and you want to sew it on the the wrong side. So you just fold it so that the right sides are together. I have the wrong side facing me so that when you turn it over the right side will show and there won't be a ridge for the sewing. So make sure that you bring it over and line it up so that the right sides are together and the wrong side is facing me. So I'll do that again. So this is the wrong side. I'm going to bring my work over and then I want to line up so that the right sides are together. And then get your tapestry needle, put it on to the long end that you left for sewing, line it up with the stitch markers, and then just sew it in place. And then once you have it in place, you can remove the stitch markers. And then you have a strap all finished. Here's the armhole. Here's the right side of the work. Here is the wrong side of the work. And you're going to repeat the same thing for the other strap. So now this is how your work should look. And this is the wrong side facing towards me. Then you're going to take and turn it over so that the right side is facing you and then you're going to take and join on the right side on the bottom. So here's the strap on top and you're going to go to the right side and then join on the bottom end here. We're going to start forming the bottom portion of the dress or the pants depending on which if you're making the girl or boy doll. So the girl doll and the boy doll are made the same up to this point. And now we're going to make the dress portion. I'm going to show you how to make the dress portion. So you just bring up a loop and then tie a knot joining the same colored yarn. And then you're just going to chain one and then go into the next stitch, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch across. So one single crochet in every stitch across, and then come back. So now I reached the end, and you can take and fold the work, make sure it's not twisted, so that the two ends meet and then make a slip stitch into the top stitch where you first started so you're going to make a slip stitch just yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch then you're going to chain three one two three and that counts to as your first double crochet for this round and I have a loose yarn in here so I'm going to bury it as I crochet but you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, go behind the loose yarn in, bring up a loop and make a double crochet and you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch around for only one round and then come back so one double crochet in every stitch around for only one round So now you can take and make a slip stitch into that top stitch of the first chain three that you made to join the round. And now we're going to start our design for the dress. So we're going to start making shells. To make the first shell, you're going to chain three, one, two, 
three, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch then you're going to chain one and then make two more double crochet into the same stitch and then your first shell is completed then you're going to skip two stitches one, two, and then make a double crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to make another double crochet into the same stitch. Chain one, two more double crochet into the same stitch to complete your shell. So one shell has two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet. Then you're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and make a double crochet into the third stitch and repeat your shell. And you're going to keep repeating this pattern all the way around back to where you first started. I'll make one more with you. So you're going to skip two, one, two, and make a double crochet into the third and you're going to make two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet to complete a shell. And this is how my work looks. So now when you reach the first shell that you made, you can make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three, yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you just take and chain three, one, two, three, and that counts as your first double crochet, but actually, no, we're going to scoot into the chain one space. So take that down. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch, and you want to slip stitch into the chain one space of the previous round's shell. So slip stitch into that space. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. So you can see I'm in the chain one space of the first shell for the round. And you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch, chain one space. You're going to make your shell. So you're going to chain one and then two double crochet. So two, chain three, double crochet, chain one and then two double crochet for your first shell for the round. Then in between the shells you're going to make a double crochet stitch. So in between the shells make a double crochet. Then you're going to make a shell in the chain one space of the previous round's shell. So double crochet into that chain one space. Remember you need two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in that chain one space for a shell. And then you're going to make a double crochet in between the shells. and this is how your work will look when you're finished. So I'll make one more set with you. I'm going to make a shell into the chain one space of the previous rounds shell. and then you're going to double crochet into the chain space between the shells. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started and then come back. Then when you reach the first chain three that you made, here's my last double crochet for the round, you're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made to join the round. Then you can slip stitch into the chain one space again 
So go into the next stitch and make a slip stitch. And then slip stitch into the chain one space. Then you can chain three, one, two, three, and then make a double crochet into the same space to make your shell. Chain one, and then two double crochet in the same chain one space to complete your shell. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch, which is the double crochet. Oop, here it is. Make sure you get into the right stitch. That's the double crochet that's in the chain into the space between the shells. Then you're going to make your shell into the chain one space from the previous round. And you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around for two more rounds, so including this one. And then you're just going to move up the same way that you did for the previous row until you've completed another round. So this is the first round and then you're going to make one more. And I'll keep repeating this to show you one more set. So I just finished the one shell. Now I'm going to make a double crochet into the previous rounds, double crochet between the shells, and then make another shell into the chain one space. And you can keep repeating this as many times as you want for the length of your uh, dress. For mine, I'm going to make one more round with this color and then I'm going to switch to the light blue color. So if you're doing the same thing as I am, you just follow along. But for those that want it a little longer, you can add more rows. Add as many rows as you want for the length of your dress. So go ahead, finish this round and the next round, and then come back. So now I have a total of four rounds with the shells and I'm going to slip stitch into the chain one space and then join my blue colored yarn. I'm using the same color as the blue in the shirt, but you can use whatever color that you want. Then you're going to chain one and then tie a knot and then cut the previous colored yarn. Then you're going to take and chain three and then you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch and I'm going behind my loose yarn ends, same chain one space to make my shell. Then you just chain one and two double crochet and I'm going behind my loose yarn ends to bury them. Then after you finish your shell, you can take and trim the loose yarn ends on the back. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the double crochet space or double crochet stitch from the previous round. And then you're just going to repeat this pattern with the light blue color and then come back. Then when you get back to where you started, you just make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made. Then you're going to slip stitch into the chain one space. Then you can take and join your new colored yarn. So I'm going to go right back to my pink, hot pink colored yarn, chain one. And then take and tie a knot and cut the previous colored yarn. Then you're just going to start again with your new colored yarn, so chain three. And then you're going to take and bury your loose yarn ends. So I'm going to double crochet into the same space, going behind my loose yarn ends, and then creating my shell, just like we've done for all the previous rounds. And then I'm going to trim my loose yarn ends. And 
Then just complete this round, one round of the pink colored yarn. And then we're going to switch back to the blue colored yarn and then one more pink and that's it. So go ahead, finish your pink round, another blue round, and another pink round, and then come back. So this is what my dress looks like so far. I just finished my last round. I'm going to go ahead and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And now I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds of the shell design. Then just take and you want to bury your loose yarn ends. Make sure that you have the right side showing, whatever side that you want showing. And I decided that I wanted this side to be my right side, even though the sewing ridge is there. It actually adds a nice design to it. But you could turn it inside out and have the right side facing, have a little bit of a different look for the dress. So either way would work. So I'm going to leave it on this side, the wrong side, as the right side for mine. And then you're going to bury your loose yarn ends, any loose yarn ends on the wrong side of your work. Just take and weave the yarn through the same colored area and then just trim it. Now you can take and sew the button in place on the back of the dress. I just sewed it right on the right side and then use the double crochet on the opposite side as the buttonhole. And then it works great. And then you're all finished with your dress. Now this is optional but you can also put cute little buttons to decorate the front of the dress. So you can see that these have little button loops that you can use yarn to place, but I'm going to use my needle and thread. Actually, I'm going to use my yarn and tapestry needle because the button loops are large enough to fit my tapestry needle. But if it doesn't, if your buttons don't fit the tapestry needle, then you can just use a regular yarn. Whoop, sorry. <laughs> the regular yarn and thread, sewing needle and thread. For my buttons, I just put the yarn through once and then I tied a knot several times, about five times, kind of like a suture knot. And then you can take, after you have several knots, then you can take and cut close to the knot. And this is what mine looks like after I'm all finished with the front. And this is what she looks like when she's all finished with her dress and her shirt and her hat, everything in place. Now for the boy's hair, I used a different color and then I just made it shorter. So I made it the same way, it's just shorter. Now for the boy's shoes, I ended up using a chain of 60 and I used my three and a half millimeter crochet hook. So there's two ways that you can do it. You can either do it the way I showed on video tutorial for the girl, where you have a thicker one, or you can make it thinner by just making a chain of 60. And I used my 3.5 millimeter, whereas this one I used a chain of 50 with the 6 millimeter. So either method will work. Now for the boy hat, you make it the same way as the girl hat, except that you're not going to make that ruffle brim, the brim of the hat ruffle. And here you can see this is the ruffle portion. You're not going to make that. You're just going to make the same dome shape of the hat the exact same way. And it will look like this. And you're also going to need the brim of the boy hat. And it's made the same way. It started the same way. So I'm just going to refresh. So this is the magic circle six single crochet. And then two single crochet into every stitch around. And then you increase all the way in chronological order all the way to one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then that's the last round that's for the boys brim of the hat so you just slip stitch and finish off after you finish the increase rounds whereas the main part of the hat you increase to the same but then you make your one single crochet in every stitch for seven rounds and then you slip stitch and finish off so you need both of these parts for the hat the boys hat then you want to take the two pieces of the hat and this portion where you finished off goes towards the back of the hat and then on the main portion of the hat you have where you finished off that will go towards the back of the hat as well. So you just tuck in 
any loose yarn ends, and then you line up the hat, so it's use the magic circle as a landmark on the brim of the hat, and then line up the top portion of the hat just past the magic circle. Then you take and turn it over, and you're going to sew with your the long end that you left for sewing, you're going to want to sew the hat to the brim. And you want to line it up so that the magic circle, the top of the main portion of the hat, is just past the magic circle before you sew it in place. Again, make sure that where you finished off on the main part of the hat is towards the back. Then take some yarn, the same colored yarn, on your tapestry needle. Make sure you have it lined up just past the magic circle on the brim of the hat and then you just take and go from the wrong side and come through towards the right side just under the stitch on the main portion of the hat. And you want to leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then go in the stitch over, go back through and then just tie a knot. and this is on the wrong side of the hat. Then take and realign. Make sure that you're still on just past the magic circle. And then you just go in and out sewing the brim of the hat to the main part of the hat. Put to my scissors there. So you just go in and out sewing the brim of the hat to the main part of the hat. So now when you reach the end, you have the brim all sewn in place. Then you can take and tie a knot and just leave the long loose yarn end so that you can finish sewing it to the head of the boy doll. I just like to go twice. So now you can take and you can bury any loose yarn ends that are on the brim of the hat only. The rest you can just kind of tuck in. Now the back part of the hat you can bury the loose yarn end where you finished off. So on the brim of the hat I'm just taking any loose yarn ends and I'm just kind of weaving them through the brim of the hat. Then just take and trim them. So now you can make any letters if you want to. You can leave it like this or you can make the letters. So I'm going to show you how I made mine. So take whatever colored yarn you want for your letters. I'm using my light blue. And then you just fold it over on itself to form a loop. Whoop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Now you're going to make a chain of 20. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two chains, three chains, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 20, and then come back. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and then pull enough yarn through to sew the S in place. Now if you're making another letter, you just have to make sure your chain is long enough for the letter. So for my S, I made a chain of 20. Then I just cinched down the knot there. Now I'm going to show you how to make the chain for the D. For my D, I chained a 24, chain of 24. So now you just shape the letter on the hat. I'm going to shape my S first, and then you just take and sew it in place. in the shape of an S. This is what my S looks like when I'm finished. Then I'm going to place the D and sew it in place. And this is what the D looks like after I sewed the D in place. So now my hat's ready to be sewn on the head of the boy doll. Place your craft stuffing and then you place it on the doll's head and sew it the same way that you sewed the girl doll's hat on. You're going to sew all around the base but you leave the, leave the brim free, so don't sew down the brim, just sew along the circular base of the main part of the hat. 
For mine, I sewed the front of the hat down first. You also want to make sure that you shape the hair how you want it to be showing. And you can always add more hair later too if you need to. And then you might make several rounds of sewing to make sure that it's, the hat is secure on the head. The shirt for the boy doll is made the exact same way as the girl doll, except I left off the chain four loops. So you make it the exact same way as the girl doll, except you leave off the chain four loops on the collar as well as the sleeves. And then here are the two buttons on the back, sewn on the same way as the girl doll's shirt. So now for the boy overalls, it's made the exact same way as the outer dress for the girl doll. The only difference is, instead of just one round of double crochet, I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total rounds of one double crochet in every stitch. Now after you finish a total of eight rounds of one double crochet in every stitch, you're going to need to find the center on the opposite side. To find the center on the opposite side, you can place a stitch marker into that that stitch but count over 31 stitches. So 31 stitches count around and then place your stitch marker and that's where you're going to make your slip stitch. So you take your crochet hook where you left off, you made your slip stitch to join and finish the eighth round of one double crochet in every stitch. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into that stitch right across where you place the stitch marker. So just go yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and now we're ready to make the pant legs. So now after you made your chain three, that counts as your first double crochet for the first round, and you're going to be working one pant leg at a time. So you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a double crochet and then you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch for the, for the round of the first round of this pant leg, the one pant leg. So again, we're making one pant leg at a time and we're working in rounds. So when you finish this first round, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So I just finished my 31st double crochet for the round. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain 3 that you made for the round. Then you just chain 3 and repeat. So you're making one double crochet in every stitch around until you have the size that you want for the pant leg. So when you come back I'll show you how many rows or rounds I made of one double crochet in every stitch around for one pant leg. For mine, I made seven total rounds of one double crochet in every stitch for one pant leg. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you want to go towards the other pant leg, so you're going to go right towards the center to join your yarn. So here's the other pant leg that we finished, and then we're going to join right at the base of for the other pant leg. Just bring up a loop, then chain one, and then tie a knot. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to bury my loose yarn end as I crochet, but you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch around. So one double crochet in every stitch around for the other pant leg. And remember, you should have 31 stitches in the round when you finish this round. So for mine, I have 30 stitches and then I have two stitches remaining. So I'm going to make a double crochet two stitches together to make it 31. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops, two loops remaining, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, 
and then yarn over and go through three for a double crochet two stitches together. Then you can slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made and then that makes a total of 31 stitches in the round which is what I want. Then you just chain three and make one double crochet in every stitch around until you have the same number as the previous pant leg. So it was seven rounds of one double crochet in every stitch around. So I just finished my seventh round so I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to bury into your work. So now you can bury your loose yarn ends and then sew your buttons on wherever you want your buttons. And then you have your two pant legs in the front and in, this is what it looks like in the back. Mine, I placed two buttons on the front, a little train button and a little car button. And then on the back, I have one of my extra buttons that I have in my button jar. And then you can use the double crochet stitch on the opposite side as a buttonhole. And then that's what it looks like on the back and then on the front. And this is what he looks like when he's all finished. He has his hat in place and his outfit. <laughs>